This is an unscripted video, and there's a very good reason for that. Look, I mean, really, it's the, uh, the other day I was grating cheese, and then I realized, why is the cheese grater red? And then it turns out that I had... You probably can't see it properly, and I'm not sure I can get it to focus properly. It looks very small. I'm not sure if I... There might be an angle to this. I'm not sure that you'll able to be able to get it because it'll have to focus. But there's a good chunk of my index finger just that, that's missing of like the tip of it. And unfortunately, it's done this in like a way that is precisely so the crust and just the way that it is cut hits on a very particular set of nerves. So typing is excruciating. And I've already typed a bunch today. So while like, you know, writing messages back and forth is all right, I really need to be able to focus on what I'm writing when I'm writing a script, which I can't do if every single, well, not every single letter I type, I do have other fingers. Uh, but if most of the letters I type, are just agony. And I can't just use the other fingers to compensate for this one because then I'll have to think all the time about the other fingers and how to use them to compensate for this finger that I have here and I won't be able to focus on the script. But it's also that I am taking a break. And it, it speaks to a sort of larger irony of the whole situation that it takes me getting like an actual injury as an excuse to take a break because it shouldn't be. This is something that I've noticed uh, uh, rather a lot like over the, this past month, maybe a, li a, a bit longer than the, the month, uh, is just people going, fucking hell, I'm so exhausted i've been doing nothing but like the basics and i'm so exhausted of course the latest instance of that happening which gave me the idea to do this video was like tim hickson on twitter but it's like maybe it is the the normalcy that we have now accepted about the 2020-ness of 2020 that we've all sort of forgotten that this year is just insanely stressful like straight up just existing in 2020 requires a much larger expenditure of willpower, which is something that I think we've talked about in my last video, than in, in like a regular year where there isn't a global catastrophe happening and a financial catastrophe on top of that, and probably a lot of personal catastrophes. This is the kind of year where even doing just the most basic shit can get you actually massively exhausted. This is like the thing, you might have heard of this. It's, you have a glass of water, I mean, actually, let me get a glass of water. This, right? I could just do this, hold this out away from me. It's very light, I could do this for a while, I put my finger underneath it, makes it a lot more relaxed. I could do this for a long, long time. But eventually, this very, very light glass of water is going to get very, very heavy, even though it is just a glass of water. And I can push through and push through and keep it upheld for a longer period of time, but it's only gonna get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. It's a glass of water. So if I stand like this for like three fucking hours, I shouldn't be surprised if eventually my arm goes, fuck it, I'm not doing this anymore. So maybe at some point I should take a sip. This is a fucking great glass, by the way. Have you seen this shit? I found this just in the hallway at like the section where you put things. When, you know when you move out of the house and you, don't, you have stuff that you don't need anymore and you just put it there for your neighbors to do? That's where I found this amazing glass. So just following your basic daily routines, when you have to do it under such an increased amount of pressure, can be especially excruciating and sometimes you just need to take a break. That is why people go to all-inclusive hotels so they have two weeks where they need to do absolutely nothing at all so when they get back to it they are recharged and they can hold up the glass of water again. But a third factor and I think this is something that gets generally overlooked uh, especially when it comes to, to household chores 
there is an expectation, and you probably have this expectation of yourself, I certainly have it of myself, that you're supposed to, you know, you have your job that you do, you have the, you know, you do that, and then also you keep like a tidy household, as tidy as, you know, is possible, if you're comfortable with a little bit of a mess like I am, then of course there is a little bit of a mess. But you're supposed to keep all the essentials like tight and tidy and all that. Because after all, I mean, that's how it's always been. Like people in the past, you know, they were able to do it, except of course they weren't. For the longest time, you know, the household has been kept tidy, not by the person that is actually going to work. Their labor used to be enough to support two people, one of whom was had their entire life basically dedicated to managing the household. And managing the household isn't a small task. It requires a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of work, a lot of thinking. Like, there's a certain amount of planning that goes into keeping a household tidy. This has nothing to do with marriage either, right? Because even if you had more of the marriage, with the way that wages stand, both people in the marriage would have to go work. This is why rich people hire maids. They can afford to not do this labor. So I'm of course not saying stop cleaning your house, but maybe don't feel as terrible as you are about the fact that it isn't super clean right now. And really, if you are just like burnt out on existence, maybe you should take out one of the stresses that takes up your time. One of the things that requires you to do labor that you think you have to live up to because that's the expectation that you have of yourself. It's fine to take a break. And especially now that it's Christmas, is a very good time to take a break. It's also entirely natural to like feel guilty about this. I feel guilty about taking this Christmas break even though I take a Christmas break every year. I mean, this year, to be fair, you know, there's gonna be uh, an actual a live stream on Christmas Eve uh, on the main channel. It's a Thursday, so I'm gonna do the Fast Food Thursday. And this one's gonna be exceptional because all of the patrons will be allowed to join. Unless it gets, like, too crowded, I might have to, like, rotate people or something. I really, I don't know. I'm just, I'm expecting not too many people to attend because, frankly, I expect people to be with their families on Christmas Eve. But, you know, given the 2020 is what it is, I think a lot of people will be rather lonely and I'd like to keep them some company. The 2020 year review is also coming uh, later this year, you know, between the holidays. But aside from that, the, the Burger Creek this year is pretty much finished. And then next year, when on the 1st of January suddenly all of the problems that 2020 has are magically solved, uh, we'll be able to get back into it with renewed energy. Because that's the purpose of taking a break. People think that taking a break is just you being lazy, but taking a break is actually you giving yourself the ability to, in the future, actually do more work. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, and you keep doing what you're doing, and you keep doing what you're doing, and you keep doing what you're doing, eventually, you're gonna keel over and die. Or, you know, just have massive burnout and be unable to move for like half a year. There's only a limited amount of work that you can do, and it's not even limited just by the time you have in the day, but simply by the energy that a human being can summon even the most high-functioning ones. Like all those like super high achievers, of course they ha tend to have a lot more energy than the average person, but also they know when to take breaks. They know when... This is, for instance, like Steve Jobs did this. He, was wear he wore the same outfit pretty much every day. And this wasn't because... Uh, this is. I mean, of course, it was partially because of the marketing aspect of it, because he was trying to cultivate a persona, but also because there's only a certain amount of decisions that a person can do a day. And him being a CEO, he had to make a lot of decisions. So he didn't make the decisions of what to wear each day. He just had that decision made once, and there it was. That's why CEOs have secretaries. They take a lot of the clerical decisions over for them. They keep an eye on scheduling in a way that the CEO then doesn't have to. You don't have that luxury, probably. You don't have the same advantages that wealthy people that are extremely high energy have. So there's really no point in beating yourself up about it.
Oh, and also this, this is very important. Don't, don't just take a break and then stress out over how, how you have to make the most out of this break to get the maximum amount of relaxation. Oh my god, I need to relax. I need to find activities to relax. I need to decide of the things to do so I can relax. That's even worse. That's just changing your schedule. That's putting yourself under more stress and more pressure than you would have otherwise. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I guess like, comment, subscribe. I don't know. I don't even know if this was any good. Uh, consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar. Maybe buying some of the merchandise. Probably not going to arrive in time for Christmas. All my short story collection that is available as an ebook, so uh, that, you know, will arrive before Christmas. Not the physical copy, by the way, just to point this out. And in that spirit, genuinely, like, you know, take a break, stop working for maybe a couple days, and you will find that you are very refreshed after it. And see you around, cunts.